Today I'm going to talk about something that comes back and haunts me every once in a while, and that is the wonderful, wonderful thing that is coital cephalgia. Now, for those of you not familiar with it, um, this basically is a, well, it couldn't be mundane, but uh, more often than not, it's a very, very sharp, stinging, horrifyingly painful headache as you approach or achieve orgasm. Now, this can happen whether you're enjoying sexual activity solo or with a partner. Um, the idea behind it is that the cause is a swing in blood pressure uh, down and up as you approach and achieve orgasm. Um, for myself, uh, the searing pain, the real pain hits before the moment of orgasm. Um, so it's not at the point, it's actually just before, so you really get hammered. And uh, to describe the pain that I feel, it's like someone's jamming a knife up through the top of your skull. Um, I first ran into this about a year ago. Um, hit me by surprise. I was very, very surprised. Um, in this case, it happened with a partner. Um, and it didn't happen on the first go-around, it happened on the second go-around. Um, and the headache stuck with me afterwards. Not severely painful. The, the, the onset of it was fairly painful, but the headache afterwards lasted for about six, seven hours or until I went to sleep. I was fine when I woke up. Um, I was a bit cautious after that and uh, waited a few days before any sexual activity. Um, and then uh, any time after that for the next month, it came right back. As a matter of fact, the first time I tried uh, achieving an orgasm, after that initial pain, um, it was much worse. And the headache lasted three days afterwards. The first day, it was very, very intense. Um, now... If you go to your doctor and ask for help with this, you're going to get about as much help as, say, women get when they try to get help for their um, common migraines. Uh, I know men can get these too, but more often than not, it happens with women. They have an inexplicable, recur inexplicable recurring migraine that the doctors really can't handle or mitigate. Uh, the real problem with migraines, of course, is like a lot of headaches, you got to get out in front of them. You have to administer whatever remedy you'd administer for the headache, I'm sorry, for the migraine, um, before it hits its real painful stages. Otherwise, it's not going to do any good. Um, in this case, obviously, you can avoid <laughs> the the effects of the coital cephalgia by not engaging in sexual activity. Um, or if you do engage in sexual activity, staying away from the point of orgasm. I know that's not really a, um, a great solution, um, but if you have run into this pain, um, it will really strongly discourage you from sexual activity. Um, maybe it's an act of God, who knows. Uh, but uh, again, in my experiences, uh, I was go ahead and do your research. Um, this is what I found is there's all sorts of different reasons that it could be and everybody's physiology is different. Each person gets headaches for a different reason. As such, this, uh, this coital cephalgia, obviously, is related somewhat to the um, cardiovascular system. I mean, that's where you get the, the head pressure from. Um, and ways to mitigate it, I've seen, are um, don't engage in sexual activity with your knees bent. So if you are with a partner, or I don't know why you'd be doing this by yourself, um, and you're on your knees, straighten your legs, or stand up, or something like that. Um, if you're doing heavy lifting, such as a partner, uh, while engaged in sexual activity, um, it will definitely cause something like this to happen. Um, regular strenuous activity during sexual activity or during sexual intercourse could um, prop this, but uh, it seems as though the real the real two contributors are, and I don't know, I would assume like being upside down is probably another one, but I didn't see that in any of the discussions I saw. Um, but, uh, having your legs bent like you're kneeling, uh, which is quite often done, uh, let's say if you're in a bed or again, um, supporting the weight of your partner. Um, and I'm not talking about like laying down, I'm talking about standing and lifting your partner, um, or holding your partner up somehow for you adventurous people, um, can significantly contribute to 
this happening. Uh, that is, if you if you have this problem, it might not be a problem if your partner is doing all the work, but that itself is a problem. Um, I would say if you run into this, take a break, wait a few weeks, um, and then make certain the next time you're doing this that you're 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 not exhausting yourself. Um, but it's 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 tough. It's not something that's often talked about. I found very little conversation over it. Uh, as compared to other issues like erectile dysfunction, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I'm not going to say this is a uniquely male issue, this coital cephalgia, um, but it definitely affects more men proportionately than women. As a matter of fact, quite often, uh, sexual activity and orgasm itself are a headache reliever for women. Um, and I suppose for men that aren't afflicted with coital cephalgia. Um, but this condition in specific is much more prominent in men. And again, if you, I, I'm not a doctor, uh, but from the people that have had this and discussed it and went to their doctors, there's not all too much the doctor can do other than make suggestions. Um, there's no real medication for it. Um, it does happen. It's not common. Uh, but there are billions of people on the planet, so there are a large number of cases. And that being given, there's not really a, a, a procedure or medication for it. There's really just advice or abstinence. Um, well, let me know your thoughts, or if you've run into anything different, um, just trying to spread the word.